micro organisms friend and enemy introduction our environment is made of living and non living things living things include human beings animals plants and other small living organisms some of the small living organisms are visible but some are not those organisms which are not visible to naked eyes but can only be viewed under a microscope are called microorganisms and the study of these microorganisms is called microbiology microorganisms are found in both living and non living things such as in air water soil plants food skin of animals and humans they can be found in sandy deserts cold ice caves fertile plains hot springs lakes ponds wells almost everywhere they are found most of the microorganisms are harmful to us however there are many that are useful to us many microorganisms can resist extreme climatic conditions however those which cannot resist form a hard coverings around themselves called the cyst the first scientist to study microorganisms under a self made microscope was antony van leeuwenhoek types of microorganisms microorganisms can be classified into five major groups they are viruses fungi bacteria algae and protozoa bacteria bacteria are single celled unicellular organisms bacteria measure between 0.2 to 100 microns nearly 2.5 billion bacteria are present in 1 gram of garden soil each bacteria cell exists uniquely but sometimes cling together to form long chains some bacteria are harmful to us and cause diseases like pneumonia cholera diphtheria etc there are some bacteria which are useful to us as well the changing of milk into curd is useful to us and is a bacterial activity bacteria exist in various shapes they are rod shaped bacteria they are also called bacillus example escherichia coli spiral shaped bacteria they are also called spirillum example treponema spherical shaped bacteria they are called cocci example staphylococcus aureus bacteria have an outer covering called cell wall the nucleus is not well organized the cytoplasm is colloidal about 70 to 85% of the cytoplasm is water viruses viruses are the most primitive microorganisms which are ultra microscopic viruses show characteristics of both living and non living organisms viruses are the cause of many diseases in animals and plants viruses are found in both plants and animals viruses can be found inside bacteria as well as whom they infect in that case they are known as bacteriophages all viruses are parasitic they become active once they enter the host cell the size of viruses varies from 0.01 to 0.3 microns they can be seen only through an electron microscope they may be rod shaped or spherical or cubical example hiv which causes aids it has been found that ganges water has bacteriophages due to which bacteria cannot grow and water does not get spoilt even on long storage fungi fungi are non green plants that lack chlorophyll they are not capable of preparing their own food they grow in damp dark and moist places like damp clothes old shoes etc fungi include yeasts molds mildews and mushrooms the body of fungus is made of thread like thin filaments called hyphae a mass of hyphae is called mycelium Some fungi are unicellular while most are multicellular. Algae Algae singular alga are simple plant-like organisms 
containing chlorophyll. They are seen floating as green mass on the surface of water, which is stagnant, like lake or pond. They are capable of preparing their own food, owing to the presence of chlorophyll in them. Algae grow in wet, moist surface. Algae may be unicellular, multicellular, filamentous, or branched. They may be rod-shaped, spindle-shaped, or spherical. Algae contain various colors and hence are available in different varieties like green algae, red algae, brown algae, and blue-green algae. Example: Spirogera and Chlorella. Protozoa. Protozoa, singular. Protozoan are simple, microscopic unicellular organisms mostly found in stagnant ponds, lakes, drains, moist soil and ditches. Some protozoa are symbiotic and live in the gut of termites. The size of a protozoan varies from 2 to 200 microns. The single cell of a protozoan is capable of performing all the life-giving functions. Some common protozoa are amoeba, paramecium, euglena, and trypanosoma. Amoeba traps food and moves with the help of pseudopodia. Paramecium has cilia all over its body, which are small, bristle-like hairs and help in locomotion. Euglena has flagellum, whip-like structure for its movement. It is remarkable as it possesses chlorophyll and can make its own food. It is considered as a connecting link between plants and animals. Harmful Microorganisms Microorganisms are harmful to us in most of the cases. However, they are useful as well in many ways. Here are some of the harmful effects of the microorganisms. Bacteria Some deadly bacteria cause a number of diseases in plants, animals and human beings. These bacteria are generally referred to as pathogens. Some bacteria take the credit of spoiling the food and thereby cause food poisoning and botulism. Example, Salmonella. Viruses. Viruses are responsible for causing diseases like polio, rabies, AIDS and chickenpox. Viruses cause diseases in plants like bunchy top in banana tree. Foot and mouth diseases in cattle and other domesticated animals are due to viruses. Fungi Fungi are responsible for spoiling food by fermentation. Fungi cause diseases in plants like blight disease in potato. Fungi cause fungal infections, for example ringworm, athlete foot. Algae The growth of algae in fresh water contaminates it and makes it unfit for consumption. Growth of algae cuts down the supply of oxygen and sunlight to marine creatures. This causes the death of marine life. It is known as eutrophication. Protozoa Antamoeba causes amoebic dysentery. Trypanosoma causes African sleeping sickness and Plasmodium causes malaria. Useful Microorganisms We have just read about the harmful effects of microorganisms. Now, we shall talk about how microorganisms can be our friends. Let us talk about them in detail. Bacteria Bacteria are useful to us in many ways. They play a very important role in our life. They are decomposers, hence they help in decomposing dead plants and animals. Ammonia is released by bacteria during decomposition. This ammonia gets mixed up with the soil thereby making the soil more fit for the growth of plants. Nitrogen-fixing rhizobium bacteria fix the nitrogen in the soil. They are used up by legumes in the synthesis of proteins. They are used in tanneries for cleaning the hides of animals. They help in making food items like curd and cheese. They are useful in preparation of alcohol by fermentation. They are used in making medicines. They are useful in separation of jute fibers from the stem. They are used in beverage industry for giving them characteristic flavor and aroma. To show that bacteria is used in making curd, heat some milk in a pan until it is lukewarm 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. Add a teaspoon of curd to it and stir. 
cover and leave it for 6 to 8 hours. The milk in the pan will get converted into curd. To show that fermentation of sugar by yeast produces alcohol, take some warm water in a cup so that it is one third full. Add 2 to 3 teaspoons of sugar to it. Now, add half a teaspoon of yeast to it. Cover the cup and keep it in warm place for 4 to 5 hours. Now, smell this solution. It smells like alcohol. Viruses By and large, viruses are harmful to us. They cause various diseases in human beings. Fungi Yeast is used in bakery to make the dough soft. Famous South Indian dishes like idli and dosa are prepared by using yeast in rice and dal. Yeast is used in making alcohol brewing. Mushroom multicellular fungus is used as a food item. Fungi are used in making medicines like penicillin and vitamin B complex. Fungi decompose dead plants and animals. They help in the recycling of nutrients. Algae Algae like chlorella is used in preparing antibiotics and various types of medicines. Laminaria, multicellular alga, is used as a cattle food. Seaweeds like porphyra, multicellular alga, is used as a food item in countries like Japan. Fishes feed on freshwater alga and marine algae. Agar, used in ice cream and jellies, is obtained from seaweeds. Blue-green algae like nostoc and anabena, are good nitrogen fixers and make the soil fertile. Agar and algin, obtained from algae, medicinal use of microorganisms. You have heard about antibiotics. The antibiotics are produced from bacteria and fungi. When you fall sick, due to certain kind of infection, the doctor invariably gives you some kind of antibiotic in the form of tablets, capsules, syrups or injections. Microorganisms are the major source of antibiotics. The antibiotic will kill or stop the growth of disease-causing microorganisms. Erythromycin, streptomycin and tetramycin are common antibiotics which are made from bacteria and penicillin is derived from a fungus. You should take antibiotics only when doctor recommends. Do not forget to take vitamin B complex with it. Sometimes, antibiotics interfere with blood formation process in body leading to anemia. Vaccination In vaccinations, dead or weak microbes are introduced in a healthy body through vaccine. The body fights and kills them by producing respective antibodies. These antibodies in future protect the body from the disease-causing microbes. Remember. The vaccine only introduces weak or dead microbes which cannot initiate disease in your body but can definitely initiate antibody production. This is the base on which vaccine works. Edward Jenner discovered the vaccine for smallpox in 1798. Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin in 1929 while working on disease causing bacteria. Several diseases including smallpox, hepatitis, cholera and tuberculosis can be prevented by vaccination. Every child is given a series of vaccination in the childhood so that he or she is protected against these diseases. Polio drops given to children are actually a vaccine which are given through mouth. Now, this vaccine can be taken through an injection. Food Preservation The food that is prepared in our houses at times gets spoiled very soon. At the same time, there are some food items like pickles, jams and jellies that do not get spoiled for a very long period of time. Now, the question arises as to what keeps our food fresh. It has also been observed that food remains fresh for a longer period when kept in the fridge. During summer season, the food gets spoiled faster in comparison to winters. It is because microorganisms cannot survive at low temperature and the optimum temperature range for their growth is 25 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. In winter, the moisture content is also less. There are various techniques of preserving food 
so that the freshness of the food is maintained for a longer period of time. There are some chemicals that are added to food so that it remains unspoiled for a longer period. These chemicals are called preservatives. Some common preservatives are acetic acid or vinegar, sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfite. These preservatives keep food items fresh and are used to check the spoilage of food items like jams and squashes. There are also other methods of food preservation. These include addition of salt. It preserves meat, fish. The layer of dry salt on these food items prevent the growth of bacteria on them. Fruits like amla, raw mango and tamarind are also preserved in the same way by the addition of sugar. Jams and jellies are preserved by the addition of sugar in the form of sugar syrup. Sugar reduces the moisture and thereby prevents the growth of bacteria. Pickles are preserved by the use of substance like oil and vinegar. Drying the substances removes the moisture and hence keeps the food items fresh. Boiling prevents the growth of microorganisms. In pasteurization of milk, this technique is used followed by cooling at low temperature. Canning After sterilizing the food, it is canned into airtight containers. Many canned food items are available in the market. Nitrogen cycle Our atmosphere has 78% nitrogen gas. The atmospheric nitrogen cannot be taken directly by plants and animals. Certain bacteria and blue-green algae present in the soil fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into compounds of nitrogen. Once nitrogen is converted into usable compounds, it can be utilized by plants through the soil from their root system. Nitrogen is then used for the synthesis of plant proteins. Animals feeding on plants get these proteins and other nitrogen compounds. When plants and animals die, bacteria and fungi present in the soil convert the nitrogenous waste into nitrogenous compounds to be used by plants again. Certain other bacteria convert some parts of them to nitrogen gas which goes back into the atmosphere. As a result, the percentage of nitrogen in the atmosphere remains more or less constant.